Hey, what's going on guys? Caleb Wisted here, and today I'm gonna show you three different ways you can use to fillet a trout. Now, the reason you need to know three different methods for filleting a trout is because when you fillet a trout, you should already have the cooking method in mind. And each different type of cooking method lends itself to a certain type of fillet. So I'm gonna show you how to fillet these fish for grilling and smoking, baking and frying, and it's a little bit different for each one. So I'm also gonna show you a bunch of tips on how to fillet trout along the way, as well as how to use an electric knife versus a conventional knife. So stick around, let's get after it. I got a couple nice lake trout here to fillet, and I'll show you exactly how to do it. All right guys, we're gonna start with this one for grilling and smoking, and I'm gonna use a seven inch Bubba Tapered Flex conventional knife for this. The reason I like to use the conventional when I'm doing it this way is I have some delicate work to do and um, I definitely want to use a conventional for preparing them for smoking and grilling. Now what we're going to do for smoking and grilling is we're going to remove the fillet, we're going to leave the skin on but still remove the pin bones from the fillet. So first step on basically all of these is to flip the fish so the back is facing you. I'm going to find this little bone right here called the clethrum. I don't really want to cut through the guts, just get through the body cavity. And then I'm going to turn my knife and follow that up into the head because there's quite a bit of meat up in here on the head of a trout, unlike some other fish. And that's basically my first cut, all the way to the backbone up in here. All right, now you'll see there's kind of a dimple here almost, and we're going to stay just this side of it, just on the upper side of that dimple and follow the upper side of the backbone bones all the way down. So there's some rows of bones that come off the backbone this way. We don't want to cut too far down or we're going to get past them and then you end up having trouble. So you just want to stay on the, just above the center line of the fish as we start to slice down here. Just like so. All the way down to here. And once we get to the end of the dorsal fin here, we can actually just kind of push our knife through, follow the top of that backbone, and then we just continue to slice at a slight angle downward, just staying right along the top of that backbone all the way to the end of the tail and just cut right through at the end here. Okay, now I'm gonna actually turn my knife back around and I'm gonna follow that backbone again towards the head of the fish until I feel the, the first ribs. And then I'm gonna follow the, those ribs upwards towards the head of the fish. You can feel your knife ticking along them there. Hear that? Okay, that means you're hitting the rib bones and they're gonna come out away from, from the fillet. And you're gonna run into a problem. You're gonna run into what are called pin bones that stick up off the ribs of the fish. We're going to have to cut through those with our knife. Now one thing you don't want to do with a trout because they're so delicate flesh, you don't want to be pulling the meat a lot um, as you cut because it's going to tear the, the flesh apart. So you really got to kind of use your knife here and I actually like to hold the fillet almost down with my hand as I cut through those pin bones because then I'm not tempted to pull on that fillet. There we go. And see now I've cut through them. You can see them right here. And I didn't rip that flesh at all as I was cutting through them. That's a nice little tip for trout that you don't really have to worry about on other fish. But trout is very delicate, especially this lake trout I'm cutting up right now. So I'm really gonna try and keep that meat from separating as much as possible and use my knife, use the blade. Sharp blade is key here. Use that to remove the fillet from the fish like so, and just delicately flop it over there. And now we can simply cut that off right at the belly, like so. Okay, now look at that. You got basically no meat left on that trout at all. It's very, very clean, and we have a nice clean fillet to work with right here. Now one other key to getting the fillets to look this clean is to bleed and ice your catch. I'll leave a little video link up here you guys can watch. It shows how to do all that, how to keep these really, really nice and clean and blood free. Um, so now what we're gonna do, we're gonna move this off to the side. Now again, we're not gonna skin this. I'm, I am gonna squeegee my table and get the slime off here. But we do have a fillet that's basically ready for 
smoking here, except I like to remove these pin bones. You can see them sticking up here. Just one row of bones that goes to about right here to right here, and they kind of angle back all the way to the skin at about this angle right here. So what we have to do is slice those out. Now I'm gonna use the same knife I was using to cut the filet off the fish, and I'm just gonna find those bones with my knife here, and I'm actually gonna start where I feel the last one, and I'm just gonna start cutting on the dorsal side, which is the back side of the fish here, at a slight angle this direction, because that's I know that's the way the bones go, and I'm just gonna start following those bones down to the skin. You can actually see them right there. Very gentle, again, this is trout. We don't wanna be pulling and yanking on the meat because it will separate and that's just not as good a quality of a filet when you have that happening. Okay, so we follow those bones all the way down to the skin. You can see, see these white things here? You can hear, that's bones right there. All the way to here, and that's about the last one, right in there. Now I'm not gonna cut through the skin, I'm just gonna get down to the skin. You can kinda see the skin right there, okay? Now I'm gonna cut on the other side of the bones, right here. Real gentle, take your time. No need to be in a hurry. If you get in a hurry, you're gonna start tearing things apart. You're gonna start wasting meat. And we don't wanna do that. Real gentle with the knife all the way down to the skin on this side. Okay, so now the only connection they have is right underneath that strip of bones. Get our knife in this side and we're gonna just turn it and slice just a little slice underneath that row of bones as we go. And now I should basically be able to put my thumb here, and my, my forefinger here, and just whoop, pull them right out. Just like that. And now all those bones are gone out of that section and you can simply close that filet back up, just like that. And now that baby is ready to go in the brine. There's no bones left in it whatsoever. They're all removed. You got the skin on to hold that together on the smoker or the grill. You're gonna put that skin down on the grate and that should make a great, great smoked filet or grilled filet. Okay guys, moving on to the other side of the fish. We're gonna change it up a little bit. We're gonna use the Bubba Lithium Ion Electric on this side. Now a lot of electric filet knives are gonna have two sharp serrations for trout. They're gonna really tear them up. But Bubba has this e -glide, uh, eight inch e-glide blade and it's got rounded teeth on it and it's a much easier, gentler blade for these trout. So I'll leave a link in the description for this blade, as well as the electric fillet knife, which I've been really happy with, as well as the conventionals too. So what we're gonna do with this now, is we're going to make that same cut, but then we're gonna cut right through the ribs of the fish and we'll remove them later. So what we wanna do is kinda get that same angle here. Just like so. Same as we did on the other, the other uh, side. But now, instead of going through and cutting down here part way and fiddling around with that, we're just gonna take off the whole side of the fish with this knife. So we're gonna get down to the ribs and we're gonna turn the knife and we're just gonna follow the backbone all the way down. Just like so. And look at that, guys. This fish has just been loading up on bugs. This is crazy. I happened to cut through the guts with the knife, and there's even hornets in there. I can see the little the stinger. There's moths. There's uh, all kinds of bugs in his stomach. Beetles. Crazy. This fish was really hitting the bugs hard. Caught this fish out on Lake Superior, and you'd think it'd be full of smelt, but in this case, this is a bug eater. All right, what I want to do now is get rid of this whole mess. Get that off my table, because I like to keep my table clean.
pat the fillet dry, make sure we don't leave anything on there. And then I'm gonna squeegee off the guts here. There we go. All right, now I'm just gonna trim off this belly here. Like so. And look how clean that fillet is. For an electric fillet knife on a trout, that's just unbelievably, unbelievably clean. Now we can either use the electric to skin this or we can use the conventional. I'll show you how to use the electric on this one. We're just gonna start here at the tail and just follow that fish lengthwise all the way down here. Just like so. Now I prefer to remove the, the skin on fish that I'm going to bake because <clears throat> it gets real soggy if you try and bake the fish with the skin on. All right guys, so now we have to remove the ribs, which I'm gonna do with my conventional knife. Even though this blade is really, really smooth, I still wanna take some extra care on this fish and not, not tear it up too much. So I'm gonna take my conventional knife and I'm simply gonna follow the ribs down, just like we did when it was on the fish virtually, but we're going to just do it with our knife now. Like so. Just like that. We can put that right in our baking pan and that's gonna make some really good baked trout. Uh, again, we don't have the skin on it, so it's gonna crisp up a lot better. It's not gonna get as soggy and that's perfect for baking. All right guys, one last method and that's how I'm going to uh, cut these up for frying. And basically I'm gonna use my conventional knife for this as well. And I already cut the other side off this fish sort of for practice, but um, we're gonna start on this side. When I do this with a conventional knife, I prefer to flip the fish to its back on both sides of the fish. Unlike the electric where it's easy to just go down and across. I, for some reason, I just prefer to flip them back this way. I find it easier with the conventional once I get to the left-hand side of the fish like I'm doing now. But we're gonna make that same cut that we've been making. Get up in the head. Don't cut through the guts. Then we're gonna turn our knife right here. Very similar to how we did it on the first fish. Stay just above those fins on the back. And then once we get to here again, we can push through and just follow that backbone down to the end. Pop through. And now again, we don't want to be pulling on this. We just want to free the meat from the bones. We're gonna cut forward again to the ribs. Okay, and again, when I get to those pin bones, I'm gonna angle, I'm gonna push down here so I don't pull that meat apart. I'm gonna cut through those pin bones like so. Voila. Just like that, and then we're gonna follow those ribs down. Again, not pulling, just gently guiding that meat off the fish. Like so. Then again, separate that filet from the belly meat. Like that. Now we can throw this. Now, unlike the last filet, this one does not have the ribs in it, but it still has those pin bones in it. Now what we're gonna do when we, when we uh, fry this fish is we're going to, we're just gonna cut this up into pieces and we're not gonna leave the skin on it. So what I really like to do when I'm skinning a larger fish like this is switch to my nine inch tapered flex bubble blade because I can get more of a stroke going through that uh, it just works better to have a little longer blade, I guess, on a bigger fish. So I like to have that nine inch handy and I'm just going to slide it right down the length of the fish here. And what I'm gonna do when I'm frying these fish is I'm actually going to skin it just a little bit shallow to leave some of the fat that's attached to the skin on the skin. 
and I don't want a ton of fat when I'm when I'm frying this fish so as you can see here I left a bunch of fat and bloodline on the skin here so I don't have to deal with that when I'm frying it and uh, I find the more leaner fish to be much better when you're, you're frying it so we're gonna take that remove it flip this back around and now we need to remove those pin bones so let's find them here there they are you can feel them right in here right along the back here and we just have to find the the dorsal side of those bones follow them to right about there is the last one right about there and then just slide your knife in cut on that side of them like so now the tail everything back here is boneless so there's a nice chunk we can fry there's a nice chunk we can fry now we just got to slice those bones off of this piece just like so and now we have three nice pieces that we can fry up I can I always, I always cut them into you know kind of fry size pieces sometimes this belly meat is just so thin it's not really worth keeping so I'll trim that off a little bit but there's four really nice pieces that you can throw in the deep fryer bread them up and have some good fried up trout well there you have it guys three different ways you can use to fillet a trout depending on how you plan on cooking that fish now if this video was valuable to you make sure you like and subscribe to the channel because there's a lot more videos like this one on their way and here's another one to watch right here. We'll catch you guys later. Get hooked up.